from Well, you just a few moments ago, Dickie Bird was here and uh, he was reminiscing, talking about some of the memorable moments here at this famous ground at Headingley. Well, we're going to bring you one of those uh, now. We're going to go back 20 years to the first day of the test, England against Australia in 1977. Great significance for a Yorkshire hero, Geoffrey Boycott. Well, we can join it. There are no runs on the board and Jeff Thompson is bowling to Boycott's opening partner, Mike Brearley. gone. Well, there's a big shout and umpire Bud's given him out. Really out. Caught by Marsh. Bold Thompson, the first wicket to go. And umpire Bud had no hesitation in uh, putting up the finger. There was certainly a sound. We can have a look and see if uh, he might have uh, struck the ground also. There was certainly a big deflection there. And... Uh, all the fieldsmen behind the wicket and close to the wicket, Richie Robinson on the right-hand side, were up for the appeal. And umpire Bud was very quick to raise his finger. So a blow for Australia there, a good blow for them, and uh, a sad one for Mike Brearley. Before this packed crowd being dismissed for naught, and his place now taken by Bob Woolmer, who's uh, been under something of an injury cloud in the last few days. An x-ray showed that uh, he hadn't sustained a broken finger in a county game playing for Kent, but uh, they did bring up uh, Young Rose, the Somerset batsman, to stand by in case Wilmer was unfit, but uh, he's okay. Out on the ground now, a little earlier than we might have anticipated, and uh, England naught for one wicket. That's the sort of uh, achievement feeling so I'd need when they've lost the toss on perfect wicket and a very good delivery that from Jeff Thompson. It's a useful delivery from Thompson. It's the first one that's uh, got up to any extent and uh, drew Woolmer into the stroke and here now is Jeffrey Boycott facing Max Walker. And he's off the mark now. Two runs on the way to it. Ian Davis, the fieldsman. Oh. A lovely shot. That's his first boundary. Typical boy cut shot. That's the shot he plays so well. short of a length. Again, a question of perfect piece of time in unplacement. Walker then to Walmer. Oh, that's a way through that uh, little gap between Slip and Gully, running down the hill, and Walters can give that one up. And you get some indication there of the speed of this head in the outfield. really bad ball that Walker's bowled and uh, well, got so quickly to latch on to it. This is uh, second four, both coming off similar sort of shots, the short ball forced away square on the offside. And as it... Uh, difficult to see whether that was a chance or not. But, uh, very disappointed Max Walker there. Could well have just got a little outside edge on there. And there's the deflection, certainly. And away to Marsh's right. Uh, very difficult chance indeed. Actually Robinson chasing that. Too. So two's enough, but uh, those two bring up the 50 for England. So as the first wicket went down for naught, it's also, of course, the 50 partnership. Four runs. 
Williams, Clay Cup. Good shot through mid on. There's a gap, uh, a wide gap from uh, the bowler to mid wicket. Well, that was very quick to latch onto that half volley. Well, it's found the gap this time. No need to run for that beautiful shot. Davis is giving chase, but as ever, it hurries away down the last 20 or 30 yards to the ring here. All paid good money here today to watch this match. And, uh, take ins already for this test series, including advanced bookings here on it to the oval of past the half million pound mark. a chance and it's caught by Chapel. so Thompson takes the wicket of Bob Wilmer little outside edge good low catch going there to Greg Chapel at first slip and Wilmer goes for 37 it's the faintest of outside edges and Greg Chapel making no mistake this time dropped a couple up at uh, Nottingham but delighted to hold on to that one and being congratulated there by his teammates. Thompson to Randall. Oh, that's a good shot for four. Well, he doesn't hang around normally, Derek Randall. He's on edge, he's moving, he wants to be playing shots. And played that very well. Four more. There's no third man. It's negotiated very skillfully this time by Randall. Played a good shot. It lifted. He played it down well through the gap between Slip and Gully. Well, Randall just got down and not in time. It swung in nicely. Quite where he intended, but uh, it's going to bring in three runs. So those three runs to Randall. Takes him on to 16 and brings up the 100 for England. It's taken 159 minutes. And 159 minutes of very competitive cricket out here. That's Pascoe to bowl again, this time to Rundle. That's a friendly full toss. And it's struck very easily through mid off, and the ball racing away down in the direction of the post pavilion for four runs. LBW, up goes the finger. Pasco takes his first wicket. Randall goes LBW for 20. And the score moves on now to 105 for three. No great problem there for Bill Alley to answer. Answered it uh, immediately. Up went the finger and out went Randall. Takes him into the 40s now, up to 41. Yeah. Maybe Boycott's half century. He's half the way towards that record of being the first man to hit his 100, 100 in a test match. Goes on now to 52. Greg is eight and. It's 129 for three. A very sound innings from Boycott. Getting a 
standing ovation for his half century. Hardly dare think what would happen if the three figures come up. But uh, he's batted extremely well, having lost Brealey in the first over of the first session. but it's very fast in the outfield and there's no need for Davis to bother chasing it. The spectators can get that. It's the uh, first boundary to Tony Gregg. That's a splendid hit from uh, Tony Gregg. Six over Len Pascoe's head. Even if he'd been back on the fence, I think it uh, would have gone over the top. Greg Chappell had him positioned in about uh, 20 yards from the rope. Oh, it's good straight drive before, by the way. Slow ball, and uh, Boycott reacted very quickly to it. Well, that straight drive by Boycott takes him on to 65, establishes a 50 partnership now between Boycott and Greg. Bowls again to Greg, and it's in the air, not far short of uh, mid off, but uh, hit with sufficient power to force its way through for four. Not uh, normally very much help in this pitch early on for the uh, spinner. This is Ray Bright, who uh, just had the preference over Kerry O'Keefe for the 11th place in the side this morning. Beautifully placed shot. Starts with a half volley, a loosener, and uh, once again, Boy got very quick to latch onto it. That's driven very firmly and very correctly through the offside. He's cut away square, pass slip, battle race down for four also. This is uh, Boycott's 11th boundary out of his 75. The drive followed by the cut. And the big appeal goes up. Uh, <laughs> anything at all to do with it. Marsh again looks absolutely disgusted. So does Ray Bright, who's livid, snaps his cap away. Uh, great demonstrations, and there is Bill Ali, quite right, tell him. Uh, First Erling's exactly what he thinks about it. Greg Chappell going up to Ray Bright. He's possibly disappointed. He might well have thought that he did get an edge. But uh, Greg Chappell there trying to cool him down. There's absolutely nothing you'd never do about it on a cricket field once the umpire says not out. See again that last ball. I doubt whether we should be able to pick up very much from it as the umpire as the wicketkeeper goes across and uh, shields everything, but uh, it was certainly the most confident appeal. There's a man, third man, uh, David Hicks has gone down there. There's the 200 up for England, and it's been a fine performance after losing their skipper in the first over. Really being caught at the wicket off Thompson. They went on then to uh, be 82 for two and 105 for three. And now this pair have added 95. Hold him. And Thompson deserved that wicket. It looked as though Tony Gregg played inside the line there. Not just have got back between bat and pad, but... He was aiming away through extra cover. And in fact, he was inside the line, just making an error of judgment in trying to hit it away a little bit too square and, in fact, playing across it in the end. So the fourth wicket goes down at 201 
Tony Gregg is out for 43. Jeffrey Boycott just uh, waiting and hoping for a nice half volley outside off stump. That's it. That's a half volley through mid on for four. The back goes in there. The England players come out to applaud what really has got to be a moment here of cricket history. Jeffrey Boycott, 100 hundreds, and the place to get it in the middle of a test match against Australia on his home ground at Headingley. Superb performance from the moment he came in. Taking 319 minutes, he's hit 14 fours, and it's his 14th hundred in test match cricket. His fifth against Australia, but his first ever against Australia on this ground. And for once in a while, as a third one, uh, can forgive this demonstration. This Yorkshire crowd have been here since early this morning, waiting, hoping and praying that uh, this might be the day for Boycott to join the other band of cricketers who made 100 hundreds in first class cricket. He's in fact the 18th to do it, he's the third Yorkshireman. Herbert Sutcliffe made 149 hundreds and Leonard Hutton 129. And Boycott at the age of uh, 36 goes through to 100 hundreds in first class cricket. The day which uh, everybody on this ground will remember and you can be sure that uh, for years to come they'll be telling their children and the grandchildren that uh, they were here at Headingley the day that it all happened. And it really is quite a fantastic comeback this to Test Match Cricket. You consider what has gone on over the last two or three years. Out in the byways, content to carry on and play for Yorkshire. And Mr. Lovett Test Cricket, he said he was worried about uh, playing against the quicker bowlers but he's come back and proved that he's a master of all and that's the, <laughs> that's the fellow that's got it <laughs> and he comes on it I think that's the white rose on the Yorkshire cap that he's handing to Bilali so uh, back comes the cap which has seen him through to this very memorable hundred That's a very pleasant off drive by Root, no need to run. Just stood there and admired the shot. And half volley. Well, uh, by Walker without a mid-off. That's another half volley dispatched again. Very successfully by Root. Square on the offside this time, so he collects two boundaries. Helps himself to eight runs from Max Walker's first over. And it's Pete Davis. Mm. Two fairly comfortable runs in this. It's still running away, and Boycott got his eye on the third. First time, no joy here for Thompson. Really made that uh, hurry off and lift and pace to beat Roop. Well, that's surely out. Walter's taken a good catch at third slip. So Thompson comes back, gets his revenge for a lot of playing and missing there by Graham Roop. Thick and firm edge going into the safe hands of Walters at third slip. Graham Root then out for 34, caught Walters, bold Thompson. England losing the first wicket of the morning. And never in position, he gets into position later on. And Walters taking a very smart catch. 34 for 5, 122 to boycott, 2 to not. And out last. Oh. Just a second slip. Uh, 
Uh, there was a third slip there when Thompson was bowling. Uh, just that's a bit of that. It was Doug Waters, I think. And he's been pushed out now to cover point, leaving the gap between McCosker at second slip and Bright at gully. First ball of Benny Pascoe's spell. Good leg cutter. First spell, in fact, uh, for Ray Bright from this football stand end. Just bowled half a dozen overs yesterday from the far end, the coach to lane end. So he's going to bowl to Boycott with a forward short leg on the slip. Good stop by Hawks, but can't prevent the single from Boycott. So that brings up the 300 and the uh, shot worth seeing again. And pulling that round from uh, outside off stump. So 300 for five, not moving on to eight. And, uh, Alan Knott's theory, of course, about sweeping the ball from outside the off stump is that if he misses it, he's fairly safe, provided he's got his leg across. Difficult and ever to be a judged LBW. That's a good shot. Burn the strike. Move nicely into line. It's fall through mid off the boy, but his uh, first boundary of the morning off the middle of the bat. Brought up down between Boycott and Bob. Bright to not. A nice full toss. It goes through for four as well. <laughs> he at, uh, same position that he put him away in the previous over. A very friendly full toss. And enough to uh, push Robinson back now. room between Greg Chocolate slip there and <laughs> didn't think too much about that. Is life really worth it? And see how fine this went between Marsh the keeper and Greg Chocolate slip. Thank you very much. Thompson to boycott now. He does push the way wide of Pasco. Will this go through to give Boycott 150? Robinson giving chase. And just pulling it off before it crossed the ropes. So Boycott uh, gets three for it, moves on to 149. That's the 150 for Jeff Boycott. David Hooks, the man coming round. And a nice piece of fielding from him. Another glorious throw. The boycott goes on to 151. It's taken 490 minutes. And he's hit 19 boundaries. So just on half the number of runs have come from fours. 151 out of 342. Face Ray Bright. Dobbed away just in front of him. They scurried through. It is 50 for the little Kenton England wicketkeeper. And adding a 50 to that brilliant hundred he made at Trent Bridge. 
innings of completely different character. This 50 has taken 167 minutes. And it's contained at six boundaries. So 50 out of a total of 383 for five. Throws there. Oh, Max Walker looking very wary. Hadn't moved at all to cover the throw coming in from David Hicks. So Boycott will collect five runs for that. A single plus four for the overthrow. So much to the displeasure again of Ray Bright. Uh, had the happiest of uh, matches here at Headingley. Oh, he's having a go. He lofted that way over the top of David Hooks at mid off. And uh, really made the crowd sit up. First, uh, really aggressive shot. Uh, played for a very long time. First time that either of these two have ever thought about lofting the ball into the vacant uh, spaces in the outfield. And he's out this time, LBW, his foot a long way down, and Marsh is telling him to go. Alan not very happy, but um, uh, very unhappy, but Lloyd Budd's finger went up uh, almost instantly. Alan Knott goes, the six man out, made 57. Departed at a time, and it looked as though he might just have been going to have a little bit of a go. So Alan Knott out for 57. 177 minutes at the crease, and a partnership worth 123 runs. Command there, a wicket falls in the very first over that he's in charge. He's brought uh, Richard Robinson up to forward short leg now for Ian Botham. And that's bowled him. And the quicker one there, he got on the back foot, it hurried through. It's a good over for Ray Bright and uh, Marsh there as the captain has uh, seen two wickets tumble in a single over. And young Ian Botham, a disappointment for him, out for naught. ball of the over the ball hurrying through straightened up quite nicely but, uh, Ian Botham looking to play a forcing shot really before it picked up the pace of this pitch and paying the penalty for it so he's the seventh man out 398 and uh, must be an even money chance now of boycott batting all the way through this innings Both them straightened nicely, just a matter of a couple of inches to beat the edge and hit the off stump, and so did that one. Oh, what a great catch. Now, Ray Bright has taken two wickets with the ball, and he's now taken a magnificent catch to complete his third dismissal and give Lenny Pascoe his second wicket of the innings. That was one of the great catches of all time. Man out. Derek Underwood for six, Court Bright, Gold Pasco, and what a good day Ray Bright is having.
I'd like to pass go. I had the impression it was probably Rodney Marsh's, but uh, we can get a better glimpse of it on the replay. Little outside edge. Shot. First time he's really cracked one through the offside off drive. Super shot there from Boycott. Yeah, cracking uh, off drive there by Boycott. Everything right, foot to the pitch of the ball. Timing, great sense of power in that shot. Takes him on to 183 at the end of the Ray Bright over. It's Hendrick to face Pascal again. And that's out. A little catch pushed into Richie Robinson, who's been hanging around in that. Uh, all a short position there for two days. At last, he's got his rewards. So a fairly gentle catch offered by Hendrick, but Robinson made no mistake. So Hendrick goes for four. He's the ninth Englishman out. The score's on 422. And that's the way he went. If that was off the pad, Rodney Marsh has uh, tried a little contract there. He's walked off in the direction of the pavilion. With that ball going straight off the pad into uh, silly point hands. It's like a uh, bit of gamesmanship there by the Australian keeper. Thompson is no slouch in the field. There's no way he could get across to cut it off. It's like a marble on a skating rink going down there to beat finally. Oh, that's beaten him. Good delivery. <laughs> Pascoe's gone up in there. Can't think why. Bill Alley enjoyed that. And that's it, and he's gone. Well, what a great anticlimax there, a great disappointment to this crowd as Jeffrey Boycott is the tenth man out, looking to have carried his bat through the innings. He falls at long last for a superb innings of 191, made out of an England total of 436. And the fat Edinburgh crowd rising to welcome home their hero. Tremendous moment for Boycott. He would be slightly disappointed that he couldn't see it all the way through. But he's seen England through a stay of 10 hours, 27 minutes, 1 5 and 23 fours in this marathon effort. So Boycott back in the England side, saw them through to victory at Nottingham, and they surely laid the basis here at Headingley for England to retain the asset. That's certainly a time that Geoffrey will remember. We'll be reminiscing in just...